Hey everybody, um, today I'm going to be replacing the speaker in the rear deck lid uh, of my Lexus LS430. Uh, right now I'm just prepping. I moved all moved the seats up to give me some room to work. Um, if you guys haven't, I'm sure you, if you're watching this video, you've probably seen other videos where everyone removed all of this. And uh, I saw a guy on um, Amazon actually move this out of the way because I popped this off already just to make sure my speaker needed to be replaced. It sure is ugly, but you know these speakers do sound pretty good when they're um, when they're working properly. Um, but mine isn't crumbled or anything like how everyone else's is. Mine is just internally blown. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and replace that. It just goes. <laughs> so it hits some um, some tones good, but. For the most part, it just sounds ridiculous. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to be replacing that. But here's the reason why you need to remove all of this nonsense, basically the whole rear of the car. Uh, because this is, I mean, you could cut this. Uh, I mean, you you really could because it's not going to be showing at all anyway because you're going to have that panel here. You could just cut along where the square is. Uh, you could do that, but honestly, I think it would just be easier just to remove everything have a cleaner job and you can fill in some of those gaps because I'm getting the same poke audio uh, subwoofer that everyone else is getting so anyway so the first thing I'm gonna have to do is remove this seat here um, well that's actually the second thing the first thing I'm actually gonna do uh, the first thing I'm gonna do because we're gonna be dealing with <sighs> dealing around the airbags up in this area here and having to deal with that airbag I'm going to rib, I'm going to uh, disable or unplug the uh, battery here and uh, so I'm going to be unplugging the battery I'm not going to do the well that needs to be cleaned off oh look at that look at that that needs to be cleaned off for real Ooh. How old is this battery? Uh, I don't know. I might be needing one soon. Uh, I don't know. I, that sh I should be able to clean that off. I'm gonna check the uh, sales too to make sure they have some water in them. I have some distilled water in the house. But anyway, so I'm glad I saw that. But I'm gonna be disconnecting this because I I didn't do it, but there was a guy working on my car one time with the sound um, installing some uh, speakers and I don't know what he did but he made the airbag go off I was standing right there it was startling but anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and handle this battery and then I'm going to go and uh, yeah get started removing the seats and I'm gonna try to film everything if possible all right time to remove the back seat That was easy. Alright, just to show you guys real quick. Uh, Alright, so this is what it looks like. It was pretty easy. Um, you just pull, you see this? They're just snapped in there, um, and that was it. Just one there, one there, one there, uh, and that's that's pretty much it. You put in at a, yeah, lift that up, give it a nice tug, and then just pull it out. Now I'm gonna have to uh, remove. Let me lift these up and pop these bad boys off. I probably just do that now. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, okay. Yeah, pop that off and. It's supposed to be some type of uh, interesting. There's there's no screw there. That's it's interesting. Oh, probably maybe this is it. Okay, Let's pop this off. All right. Yeah, that that's what that went to. I don't know. It wasn't on there. 
so I need to take that off. Okay, so I got it off. It was it was pretty pretty easy. I just needed two hands. To, and I just put one hand on this side and one hand on this side, and it just pulled a little bit and it came right off. And there we are. There's another 12 millimeter uh, nut there. So go go ahead and take that off. Next, we have to go below the back, uh, the back of the back seat, and we got to get these guys. And it's interesting to see how rusty this stuff is, because due to the, um, due to I guess Puerto Rico salty air and all that, but uh, there's no rust on the outside of the car. That's interesting. So it's for those we got to grab. I've already loosened them up, so. I'm gonna go take those off, and then after that, honestly, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna take a coffee break. All right, I'm back. Uh, no coffee break just yet. Um, all right, so I got those four screws off, and then you just just comes forward. Um, now you may have uh, some connections back here for your heated seat, but like I said, my car came from Puerto Rico. There's no heated seats there. So, some of them have them, but most of them don't. Some cars. So, anyway, this one didn't, uh, even though it was standard, I believe. So, I just, you know, moved forward. It was real easy. Um, now, I'm not going to remove these out of the car. Some people do, but I mean, it's a little subwoofer. Then you would have to, if you're going to remove it totally out of the car, you have to unscrew these things, uh, these screws. I'm going to see if I don't need to do that, okay? So just pop this back up in place, and I'm going to just lean it forward. After that, now we got to get these little tabs here. And what I'm going to use is a little, like, car accessory puller. Um, there have been write-ups that said you need to remove all that side paneling and stuff, but I'm going to see if I don't need to do that because... It looks like it's it's pretty flush, but I don't know that it's I don't think it's behind behind here. See, I can stick my finger through there, so I, I don't see why we really need to remove these. But so I'm going to see if we need to do that. Okay, coffee break is over. I haven't had coffee in so long. Mm, it was good. I get sick when I drink too much. Like if I drink it two days in a row. Anyway, um, let's get back. Now I've already removed the left one. I just wanted to try to get it on camera to show you guys how easy it is. And this is the little puller I'm using. These things can break pretty easily. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys how to do it. Just wiggle it back and forth. You can use a flathead, you, you know, anything. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm all. So I just did right. this. Oh, there we go. And there it is. I know that's not focused. I'm sorry, let me just move it away. And there it is. That's what it looks like. And this will still be good to go. All right, so now let's try to remove the rear deck lid. Okay. So here it is on this side. Here's what you do with this. Just find. Oh, I thought I heard some familiar voices. I'm changing the speaker in the car. the camera all right so now this piece here you just start in the back and just kind of pull it forward and just, it just comes off there we go this one's actually harder than the other side because the seat wants to lean up against it so all right I'll put this here Trim. You gotta pull the trim off. Just pull it off. Comes off easily. All right. And then this part back here. Let's see if I can set up the camera. You want to just take this. This little mainly right here. There we go. Pop. This one back here. This one you can just kind of pull with your hand. After that pops off, you just. Pull it back there and then kind of. Ah, Alright. That one's a little more difficult than the other side, but it was still pretty easy. You just gotta play with it to get it out of this little locking mechanism there. 
one thing that the other tutorial didn't show. Okay, so the rear deck lid doesn't just really come down because your brake light um, is connected to that bad boy right there. So when you're pulling it forward, you gotta kind of reach behind and just feel for it and it slides right on out. But other than that, yeah, we got it. Now I'm just gonna unscrew these screws and then disconnect this bracket here. I'm gonna do that now. And then the subwoofer will be out. Okay, now we're back in the house. I got that thing out quick and fast and not in a hurry. Um, and we're, here's what we're gonna have to do. This connector we're still gonna use to keep everything clean inside the car. All right, so we're going to cut right here, right off of the old subwoofer. And I gotta say, look, this look how I can pick this thing up. Two fingers, it is incredibly, well, it's not that light, okay? Not like that, but yeah, you can easily do this. It's, it's, it's really, really, really light, y'all. Uh, so anyway, we're gonna need to cut this and this, all right? And then we're gonna need to salvage this thing here. We're gonna take off this bracket. I haven't really, you know, I'm gonna play around with it. I'm gonna see how much modifying needs to be done. A lot of people were acting like there was gonna be a lot of modifications, so we'll see. Uh, I have my speaker wire I got from Walmart. Um, you don't need any high-end speaker wire, y'all. I, mean, I can promise you that. Uh, this isn't even this. Okay, so here's a, uh, here's a subwoofer. It's not a high-end speaker like that, so you don't need, I mean, it's higher than this, but you know, you just don't need like a real, real expensive speaker wire like that. And then other tools I have, wire cutters, not that, let me put that up. Which is I cut myself, my daughter told me, hey, your arm is bleeding. And um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel anything, I don't know how that happened. So I have to clean that up. But anyway, then we got this for the Torx. Make sure, I think you need a, t uh, I think that thing said a T20. I think I got one here, let me see. This is a, uh, yeah, this is a T20. So we got the T20 Torx to get the subwoofer out of its bracket here. And I'm gonna show you what I got all this stuff for. I mean, this actually just came with my uh, wire cutter here, but I already had some heavy duty ones I got from Home Depot many years ago. I always keep these on deck and I'll show you what you need. This is this you're not gonna need to solder or anything, anything like that. I don't even honestly know why people do that. The only time I would ever solder anything is when I'm working with uh, computer components, okay? But other than that, anything that's dealing with car, I guess it's like a motherboard or something like that, you don't need to solder anything and I wanna show you how to do it. Real quick, the only place you can get this is from Amazon, okay? I got the same Polk audio that everyone else gets, um, uh, the DB840 DVC, uh, and it's uh, four ohms. This is supposed to be, I think, 12 ohms. What we're gonna do is turn this, and this is a dual, dual coil, uh, but what we're gonna do is turn this to a single, which should bump it up to about eight ohms. Uh, and it shouldn't overload the uh, the amp in the car, too much at all. I mean, if it does, you just have to replace the amp and you can find plenty of cheap $100. I mean, shoot, you only have to spend $100 on a real good amp, uh, but you can find some real good ones for like $120. Um, I'm just not doing that, because honestly, if I was gonna do that, I'd have got a better sub, for real. But I don't drive this car like that that much, so I'm not really worried about that. But here's one thing I want everyone to be mindful of when they order this from Amazon. There's a reason that Amazon is the only place to get this. I don't think that these are new. Uh, I say that because if you can look really closely here, look at the tape line. This thing has been repackaged several times. This is the tape line, then you got that. This is the, 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 okay. Let's see how we can get this. Okay. You can see there's one tape line here, then there's another one there, and then there's another one here. This thing has been packaged three times. Alright, now I, I didn't even open it at first. I just immediately called Amazon and was like, take this back. But 
no one else had it. So it doesn't say that it's refurbished or anything. Uh, I'm actually looking at this for the first time. Now this bad boy is heavy. Okay, this is like quadruple what that weighs. And that is probably due to the magnet. I probably should use two hands to do this. Okay, you know what, let's be smart. Let's be smart. So you check this out. It looks like these terminals have been used before. I'm trying to get this thing to focus. Please focus. There we are, okay, see that? It, it doesn't look new, brand new, okay? It looks like these have been resoldered on maybe. So around the other side, this one's even more jacked up and scratched up right here, but you know, whatever. If it work, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really tripping. Okay, a couple things I missed. You're gonna need some wire cutters, okay, to cut, uh, or just cut it off, cut this bracket off here, okay? Then you're gonna need something, you can just use anything to depress this out of said bracket, okay? So, you put that aside. Another thing you're gonna need is a flathead because the rest of this bracket um, does not wanna come off. Now that other circular part sat on top of the subwoofer, which I'm not even sure we need, uh, but this is the boy that's gonna hold this mug in place uh, where the subwoofer sits into. And so we're gonna have to pry this off a little bit and you're gonna need a flat head to do so. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, gang, I'm back. Here's something I discovered. Um, I noticed a lot of people were actually modifying the subwoofer. It comes with a ring on there, all right, which is perfect because this ring, it's a rubber, thick rubber ring that uh, is for the same purpose that this, <laughs> this little thing was for, okay? So this is gonna pack a lot, likely, a, more than likely a, a nicer wallop than this one, so you wanna leave this on here. I took it off just to investigate. I'm not cutting into this. This is metal, that's just ridiculous. This plastic bracket here, yeah, I'll go ahead and cut into that, even though it's a Lexus part, and yeah, they if I totally ruin it, it'll probably cost more than this whole speaker. But, I'm gonna take my chances. So, I began, really only need to modify one of these things, it seems like. Uh, otherwise, it's a nice fit. Um, so what I did was just cut part of this off. There you go, as you can see. Oh, this is deja vu, wow. Anyway, as you can see, so I was just gonna do, show you guys on camera how I did that and how I'm doing this. You don't need anything special because it's just plastic. Maybe some gloves, because it kind of hurts my hand. Uh, let's see, I used just these wire cutters, okay? And first thing I did was this. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. Just to show you guys how I started, but it's easier with two. You got that extra strength. All right, so I just took it here and I squeezed it. <clears throat> it's probably not gonna break. Uh, I'm not that strong, but we have a mark though. Let's see, we have a mark of where I'm sorry. I, I wish this camera were autofocus, but we have a mark of where we want it to be, okay? And it's pretty crooked, because that's angled, so I probably should have angled that more, um, so it would be straight down. But now I'm gonna cut along the bottom. So, what you do with that is, just take it here, and I'm gonna angle it upward so it's a straight, clean cut. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I use brute, brute strength on that one. And honestly, you might be able to just use... This is gonna be a little sloppy, but see, it's kinda like perforated paper. It's already guided a little bit. You can just do that to snap it off. And when I snapped the other one off, I just used two hands and it shot all the way across the room. So this is a little safer. Just make sure if you're gonna just use the uh, wire cutter, see that was way less dramatic. You want to close your eyes because that mug just shot. Now it's a little sharp there, but I mean that doesn't really make a difference. Just kind of just do this to 
clean it up a bit. And it's, now see that, it's coming right off. All right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I suck at holding the camera. And I need to just do it through the camera, but this thing doesn't focus well. It's better to keep my eyes on the real thing. I'm sorry. So I just did this to clean it up, that's all. Put my knee on here, since I only have one hand. Okay, so anyway, that's, that's that. Uh, now I'm gonna see if this thing fits on the sub. All right, so we got our bracket together now. Um, it fits perfect. Uh, I haven't put it on yet because I'm about to wire everything up, uh, and I just want to show you what I would recommend. So what we're gonna what we're gonna do? You're gonna um, take a piece of wire and connect it to one of the positives on one side, and connect it to a negative on the other. Okay. And what we're gonna do? I just cut one piece. I'm going to split this piece in half, okay? Let's do the one with the line on it. Yeah, so that's the one we're going to use. This one. All right. Now, now that we got that split, um, I have I didn't make it super taut. You don't want to do that just in case there's a slight pull. You don't want to make it too long, but you also don't want to make it too taut. Uh, so let's go ahead and strip it. Uh, and for that, let me get my wire cutters. Here. Um, we're just going to take it and go through here. This is 14 gauge, so we're going to stick it in the... 14 slot there. We're gonna have about that much, that much slack. Uh, maybe a little less. All right, yeah. Oh, whoa, goodness gracious, it's got stuck to the magnet of the, uh, and I would not recommend doing this on the floor because you get these little shards. And I have little kids, so I'm actually going to move this to the countertop. All right, so now that I did that, I'm going to twist it. All right, and I'm going to take, since that's... I'm gonna use one of these blue ones. The blue, they, all things are, are colored, okay? Uh, the blue ones, blue means uh, 16 to 14 gauge, or 14 to 16 gauge. The red is, I think it's 16 to 22 gauge. Okay, even though I'm gonna be using red ones in a bit, red butt connectors is what these call. I'm gonna use this blue one now. And what we're gonna do is put this inside of here going to twist it on so we don't mess anything up you know and I actually really ideally you want to do it to the point where you can see a little bit of the, the cable coming through you can kind of see the copper there and I'm going to crimp it like this see it has a blue dot there so that's what, the one we're going to use because if you do anything smaller it could break it. I'm gonna crimp this nice and tight. You can see that? Got us a nice connection there. We're gonna do the other, same thing for the other side. There we are. So this is our new wire. <clears throat> you got the aerial view. So this is what it looks like. All right. And you can get these, a pack of these, probably like 50 cents, not 50 cents, but maybe like a dollar, dollar and some change. And now we're just going to take this, I can do this easily with one hand, and slide it onto that terminal there. It's going to be a nice, secure connection. It's so good, it's... <clears throat> Give me a problem going on there. There we go. And we're going to do this one. Ah, crap. See? It's too short. And now I've wasted two butt connectors. This is why you don't want to make it too, too short. Because ideally you want this to come around and it's, I mean, I'm just missing it. 
I think I might try to just bend this a bit. All right, so that worked. All right, so there we go. I just bent the terminal just a little bit and we're in business. And I can just take these off whenever I want, just pull it off, pull it off. And you know, we'll be good to go. We don't have to worry about soldering it, which would have taken a whole lot longer. And um, we don't have to worry about, you know, if we ever need to do something with it or want to sell the car and take this out of something and salvage it, we don't have to deal with cutting things wow. off. Wow, yeah, I know, some speakers, man. All right, so let's on to the other side. Okay, now we've moving, moved on to uh, splicing the connector here. Uh, now, I cut these a little, made these a little too long, and, and I wanted to show you guys what you can do. Jeez, come on. What you can do if you make the same mistake. You just twist them up real good. Oh, but you focus now. So, whatever. Whatever works. All right, so you just want to twist it up real good. And then, and here's how you know I, I made them a little too long. So I'm going to take this butt connector, right? I'm going to twist this on there. But it stops like right, you see it stops right there. And I don't want to do that. That's, that's, that's too short. It needs to cover, because all this part right here is just covering, like what a, what tape would do. So I want this to come down to about here. So I'm going to cut a little bit off. And all I'm going to do is just go over the trash can and I'm going to cut like right there. That's it. So I'm going to do it for both. And the reason I twisted it up is just so it's not a big mess and they just kind of come off together. So I'm going to do that now. I'm back and now let's look at it. So you see it's about that long now. Let's take a look at our butt connector and ooh, that's perfect. Now I'm right going now. to go back to the sub and I'm going to take the speaker wire and I'm going to do the same thing. Have a little connector going to that. I'm going to that, and then I'm going to connect those to this. All right, so I'm going to do that off camera. Okay, just something else I noticed I wanted to address. Um, when you're doing this part, put these uh, connectors on first. Don't connect them, because if you connect it to this, it's going to be a little more cumbersome to deal with. you got to fuddle with that and this. So I'll just do this. It's easier than splice this tip and connect it to these last. Another thing I would recommend is uh, cutting back this sheath here a bit so you can spread these wires out completely, cut it off, it don't matter. It's just acting as like a piece of tape to keep these two together. But it's not, you know, necessary to have it. I prefer to have more room when I'm um, connecting the wires and stuff. Alright, another thing I wanted to go over. Um, before you end up connecting these, double check and put just the single wire on here first to see if it's long enough. The ones I did first were too short uh, because you got to keep in mind that uh, this thing here is going to have to go all the way around and go up through a hole uh, basically and go, it just needs to be long, okay? So just make it longer. Uh, it's, you don't want this thing taut at all because you don't want it to disconnect. Um, and I, on second thought, I, I am going to actually wrap these with electrical tape because I got to be honest with you, I'm not trying to redo this all over again. These are snug. I might not do these, but I mean, why not? So uh, that is just something I wanted to give you guys a heads up on. Another thing, I have 14 gauge speaker wire, okay? But clearly this is not 14. This is probably like 16, maybe even 18. Um, so I think it's 16 though. So what you're going to want to do is either get 16 gauge speaker wire yourself uh, or what you can do is still splice this. It's a pretty easy solution. You want to splice it. Um, I honestly just recommend getting 16 gauge wire but uh, splice it uh, at the 16 gauge point there and it'll just strip off the extra copper. Do it over the trash can because you'll have shards everywhere. So it's always a good idea to keep the same size speaker wire going throughout. Um, I kind of knew that this is little wire. I don't know why I still got 14 gauge. I should have got 16, but oh well, it'll be okay. Okay, so now I'm back and I'm about to actually tape these up. I always use 3M or Scotch, Scotch 3M tape because uh, it's the best. The other tape just unravels and it gets nasty. So I'm going to go ahead and tape up here, here, and here here and here 
And uh, I mean, you don't really have to, but I'm gonna just do this part too, just because. Another thing, a lot of people actually don't know how to tape stuff up, so I'm going to try to see if I could just show you guys on camera. You want to make sure you, you know, this, you could cut this down, but I, I think I could do it. Um, you want to do it not connected to the subwoofer. What you want to do is just get a little lip up and go around the edge there. And you want to wrap it around like this so it's nice and tight. Make sure you cover the whole part and the connections until you're just on the wire. And then, I mean, you could just use your finger to snap it off. It's hard. It's, it's harder to to do uh, 3M tape. And then you would get a nice. Let's see how does it look. A nice. Uh, you'll get a nice wrap just like that it won't be anything loose this is never ever in life coming apart i'll have to cut this okay so i'm going to do the rest of connections like that i just wanted to quickly show you guys that how clean and tight that is and uh yeah moving on okay so i wanted to show how i was doing this first i drilled a little pilot hole here okay uh just put uh you know you honestly could just close your eyes and guess and pick a spot but I drilled that one in, okay? And now I'm just gonna go around and look for places I could find to drill another hole into. That might be a good one. Uh, let's see, no, this one's a good one. That one's a good one. And I probably only just do those three. I mean, I could do another one beside here. So I used a 1 8 uh, drill bit. It's a lot smaller than the screw, but it allows for the screw to kinda screw grooves that go into the plastic, okay? So that's what you wanna do. Um, and now, after since that's secure and the bracket is pretty kinda of secure now, I'm gonna just go ahead and drill the other holes carefully. I'm gonna start on this side, the opposite side of that one, cause that one's holding that side down. I'm gonna hold it here, hold it while I drill it, right in there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do this one and then the next one and that'll be it. Okay. Yeah, so I'm done. I only did three because, again, that was all that was necessary. You got to keep in mind, this is underneath the sub, so it's all just laying on top of it. This is really just to kind of keep it in place, and honestly, if you get into an accident and flip the car over, this won't fly out of the darn screen. So, three down, and it is super tight. <sighs> I wish I had some more of that. Good wine, by the way. Uh, yeah, so now we're going to go uh, put it in the car and test it. So... Before you uh, put everything back up, you want to make sure it works, and look at that. Probably can't hear the bass, but you see it moving. Alright, so I'm buttoning everything back up. I ain't even screw it in. So last thing we want to do, I'm going to go ahead and fill those little gaps, most of them anyway. One of them, uh, the little controller, I mean not the controller, but the connector goes through. So I'll seal it up, but I'm going to leave like a little gap. So I ordered this stuff from Amazon. Um, some sound in it was I think I paid like twenty dollars for it. Pretty cheap. Uh, and ouch, it just cut me. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out some pieces with this. Right, I wanted to just show you guys how I was sealing this thing up. I mean, it's really not a big deal. Uh, so I'm about to do that piece right there. So I just use my hand here. Okay, it's about maybe half my hand. And so I'm going to come down here and find a, I'll just use this slab, we're just going to cut it like up to here and then boom, just a giant piece, okay? And the reason why you kind of want a super giant piece anyway is because you want to make sure it overlaps the hole really good. Alright, let's make it a little even bigger than that. This is probably too big. All right, and now we're going to just take this off, take that left off, and here it is. I'm going to slide this underneath here. There, this is, oops, I'm sorry, slide it underneath here. This is a little too big, a little too big. But we gonna, I'm sorry, I know I keep moving the camera, but all right. So let's just start right here and work our way on over. 
and just make sure you press down on the edges really good and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a skinnier piece that goes over this hole and overlaps that a little bit because it's going down the hole and a little piece there and uh, yeah that's it so I just want to show you guys how I was doing this this is all so I'm about to finish it up and then I'll get back and butt button everything up oh it's hot oh what did I just sit on oh okay um just a few words when you're putting Humpty back together again make sure you want to lift the seat make sure it's on those three pillars there all right before you proceed it's a ladybug and uh yeah uh so i mean i'm almost done then you want to make sure everything's lined up down here as well but more than likely if it's lined up up top it's gonna be lined up on the bottom so I'm gonna screw that stuff in, it's hot. Actually, I'm gonna give me some water, screw that stuff in, and um, yeah, we're gonna be good to go. Remember to uh, plug up your third brake light again, and that's pretty much it, man. The stuff goes back in relatively, I mean, really easy. So just make sure, I mean, this indentations and stuff is make sure it's all lined up and just snap it back into place. Uh, I will say with these, I had a snap that was stuck into the wall there um and all i did was just take it out and slide it into the back of this you, you'll see what i mean but more than likely yours just came out uh so i'm gonna finish that up and then come back we'll be all i'm back with another tip something that just happened to me these things there's a reason why one wasn't on there when i first took it off because they fall man you what i suggest you do is balance it on there first do all three you balance it on there then take this guy here and start to tighten it a bit and then move on to the one over there and do the same thing. And then this one will be easy. If you drop it, you'll be able to go down and pick it up. But the other ones, I dropped them. I dropped it on the first one and I had to like pull the whole seat off to go and get it. So yeah, just take your time, put it on there with your finger, balance it, and then use your little socket to screw it on just a little bit to make sure it's secure and then tighten them all up later on. You should do that with everything. Just get every all the screws in place then tighten them all up once all the screws are on, okay? Now let me finish this up. Well, we're all done. The back seat looks like a back seat again. All right. Air, please. I have to roll up the windows, kids outside. I don't know what might come on. Every time you see me, Here we I go. Look like I hit the lotto twice. Drink, you got them right. Woo! Yeah, I love myself because I swear that life is just not as fun. Needs got the weed. Alright. Hey, y'all, that, that, okay. Whew. So, I'm tired. But just to talk about what kind of sound that is, it is like, <laughs> that Mark Levinson wasn't doing that. It is like deep punch you in the throat type of bass. And that's what I like. Um, I would say that was, that, was, that was worth it. That took me, I don't know what time it is, this thing say one o'clock. Um, it's like five something. Uh, and I took a few breaks. Uh, and I've been recording too. That really took up like an hour if I didn't have to record. So this is probably like a three hour project overall. If you're taking your time, three hours, um, it could be done in less time. But uh, especially since y'all seen the way I did it, like I had to figure some stuff out. But if you do it the exact way I show you, um, yeah, I don't know how long this video is even gonna be, but if you do it the exact way I tell you, I mean, you should be able to knock this out in like an hour and a half, two hours, for real. Uh, but yeah, this was worth it, okay? Worth it, worth the $50, fantastic, all right? Don't fix your speaker. Don't fix your speaker. This is way better. All right, I'm done. I'm about to go eat. I'm hungry, and I'm hot, and I'm sweating. I need to get a shower. See y'all next project.